Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. About a month ago, on a Saturday, I found myself in a big, beautiful house, packed to bursting point with 78-year-olds. They were everywhere, chatting beside the fireplace, snacking on brownies and pencils, and hugging each other. Several talked to me, asked about my college plans, and told me about their grandchildren. They wore all colors of embroidered sweaters, quilted jackets, and practical shoes. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, what on earth does Eva do with her weekends? Well, I'll tell you. On this particular Saturday, I attended my granddad's 60th high school class reunion, and among all these senior citizens, I had a tremendous senior moment. Not the forgetful kind, but the kind that hits you all at once at the end of high school, and leaves you unsure whether to laugh or cry. Because I realized that in 60 years, this will be us. We will be the ones with the pastel perms wearing Dr. Scholl's. We will start happy and reminisce about homecoming football games and the time Tim Rudd fell down the stairs in eighth grade. Right now, we sit together for the last time, about to scatter in all directions. But it isn't the last time. Not really. When I moved here from England in the third grade, I was simply gobsmacked at how friendly everyone was. People were falling over themselves, asking to show me around school, sit by me on the bus, or hear my opinion on my new trousers, or whether the school tomatoes were rotten. Everyone wanted to talk to me, and I was convinced that Dublin people were the friendliest in the world. Slowly, though, through long days spent reading Hank the Cow Dog and talking to Cody Ballou, my British accent started to fade, and my extreme popularity with it. It turns out, people just wanted to hear me talk. After 10 years of seeing the same 62 people every day, however, I realized that my first impression was dead on. The people in Dublin are the friendliest. Sure, we've had our ups and downs, our pointless fights and grumpy days, and more than our fair share of Twitter drama, but we've stuck together through it all. I couldn't have asked for a better group of friends or a more supportive community. I'd like to thank my parents and the parents of every single one of my fellow graduates. Being a teenager is definitely difficult, but raising one can be even harder. Special thanks also go to the wonderful teachers of the Dublin School District. It takes great talent to put up with our whining and shenanigans and still manage to impart their knowledge to us. I also owe a tremendous debt of gratitude to Coach Pringle because I don't think any of us could have passed dual credit biology without the popcorn that he brought us every week from the teacher's lounge. <laughs> and finally, I'd like to thank the community of Dublin for always being there for us, watching us shine and supporting us no matter what. We are blessed to come from a small town of such wonderful people, and I am proud to call Dublin home. Of 2013, as we head out into the world, I sincerely want to wish you all the best. Whether the best for you is a job as a neuropsychologist, a career in ag communication, or a cute little house full of cats. I want with all my heart for every single one of you to strive to achieve your goals and live your life full and well. Because in the end, that's what counts. To say it in the, in the words of the internet, YOLO, you only live once. So make the most of every minute. Take that risk, run that marathon, eat that frozen yogurt, interview for that job, get that haircut. The world is ours, class of 2013. Let's get out there and take it. And in 60 years, I expect to see every single one of you at our class reunion, bell crochets and all. I look forward to seeing pocket-sized pictures of your grandchildren and reminiscing about the last-minute struggles to find a date for senior prom. Altogether, there is no other group of 78-year-olds that I would rather spend a Saturday with. Thank you.